We've made it to 2021 and the setup is also making progress, all right? So this is kind of going to be a setup update video. As I've already made a video about this case, some of you have already probably seen it. I made an unboxing video and then we did an actual PC build in it. But if you watched my PC build video of the Razer Tomahawk PC case that we've built in, you'll know that the PC did look a little bit different to what it looks like right now. So I ended up actually vertically mounting my RTX 2080 Super once again, I've never vertically mounted it in this PC case before, but I did do like a couple vertically mounted GPU PC builds on the channel and I did have a spare GPU mount. So I'm like, why don't I put it in the Razer case and see how it turns out? And to be honest, I think it looks pretty cool. Like it kind of works with this case, you know? Uh, so yeah, the GPU, it's vertically mounted. The uni fans, I've added one more in the back and we're gonna be doing a complete like, <laughs> I guess, fan overhaul. If you could call it that, I don't know. But we have a bunch of these Lian Li 120 millimeter uni fans right here. And these are, these are just amazing, all right? Let me put my camera down. So we have a white one, we have a black one. These are 120 millimeter versions, but Lian Li also do sell, I think the 140 millimeter versions of these exact fans. They do of course have RGB. If you look at the packaging right there, uh, these are, you know, the white ones that I unboxed. A triple fan pack. They have a hub that's sitting on the table there. But what makes them so unique, in my opinion, is like how revolutionary these feel, I suppose. I think they are definitely on the pricier side. I'll have links in the video description to Amazon and maybe some other websites where you can check the pricing of these and see if you can even buy them. Because from what I've heard online, everyone is trying to get their hands on these. I even try to buy more myself. Uh, but Lee and Lee were very, very kind enough to actually send over a bunch of these fans to me. So massive shout out to them because if it wasn't for Lee and Lee sending these, I would have probably never gotten my hands on them. But yeah, shout out to Lee and Lee. Anyway, the way they work, the way you chain them up is absolutely awesome. Check this out. You can daisy chain these fans as simple as that. Now, the way this all works is there's, let me just <laughs> undo it all, boom. So there's like these gold connectors. And as long as you line the fans up, you know, you can't like connect them up like this. Uh, nor can you do the same side. So you gotta flip it around, make sure it's not like this and they're not facing in opposite directions in terms of where the airflow is gonna go. Uh, you, you wanna make sure they're both facing the right way and just line them up like this. And hopefully we can do this. Boom, you know, it's, it's honestly simple. So we've daisy chained the black one and a white one. And how many of these can you daisy chain together? I don't know, I think it's three. Maybe you could do more than three. I've never tried more than three. And what's absolutely incredible is that you can power all three fans, okay, with just one connector. But technically it does terminate into two cables. And the way you plug this connector in is it just kind of like slides in, boom, you'll hear a click uh, when it's all kind of flush right there. This is how it should be looking. Hopefully my camera is focused on that. And we have two cables, all right, coming out of this. Only two cables for three fans, incredible stuff. So one of these cables is of course a four pin PWM fan cable and the other one is a three pin RGB cable that is gonna be plugging into this hub right here. So the Li An Li Uni 120 fans, if you buy a triple pack will come with this hub right here and you can power up a total of four fans like with four different connectors, basically one of these things right here, you could plug four of these into, you know, four different fan setups, up to three fans or maybe even more. Anyway, the way the fan hub actually connects up and everything is this will go into this connector right here to power the fan. This is number one. And then I'm gonna plug in the RGB thing into this as well. And you're gonna wanna push until you hear a click. There you go, that is now plugged in and so is the fan. Now the hub itself did come with a few cables. One of these is a SATA power cable. Uh, so you're gonna need your power supply, plug it into the SATA power right here to power up all of the RGB. And then this is a four pin a cable right here. That is gonna be plugging into this slot right here. So th th there's like a smaller four pin and then a bigger four pin. This is the bigger four pin and you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's pointing the right direction, plug that in, and then of course the SATA power will plug into your power supply. Finally, we have this cable right here. This is gonna be a internal USB 2.0 cable. This will plug into your motherboard, and this is a smaller four pin connector on the other end that will plug into the middle port on the hub right here. When you're plugging this one in though, make sure that the two lines right there in the middle are pointing like upwards where you can see the numbers right here when you plug it in else it won't go in. So just make sure you do that. 
This uni fan hub did come with one more cable on one end. It has a three pin connector, which we'll be plugging into uh, the three pin port right there on the uni fan hub. And then the other two ends uh, terminate into a four pin PWM fan cable, but there's only like one wire going into it. But I plugged this one into like one of the four pin PWM fan headers on my motherboard and you know, I don't know, maybe it does something, I ain't got a clue, but I plugged it in. And then we have a three pin ARGB uh, addressable header right here. This you can plug into your motherboard and then you can control the RGB of your PC through like, you know, your motherboard software like Dragon Center or, you know, Asus Aura, Gigabyte, Fusion, all that good stuff. That's basically the main thing I wanted to show you right here. But the way I'm gonna be setting these fans up and the reason I have so many right here is because I'm gonna be doing this. So let me just connect up all of these white ones together as I need three of them on the front. That is my plan right here. Let me just daisy chain them all up. Like, do you see how easy this is? Like, oh my Lord. And there's only one cable coming out of it. Can you believe this? Like, this is amazing for cable management because Im imagine if I was using normal RGB fans, each one of these would have two cables coming out of them. That is not what you want, man, Jesus. So yeah, this is an amazing solution. Lee and Lee, you guys have absolutely nailed this. Anyway, four exhaust fans up there, five intake is what we're gonna be rocking for the PC build this time round. And hopefully we might see some temperature drops once again. And I'm not sure if I've updated you guys on this yet, but behind that liquid cooler right there, there used to be a 3600 XT a Ryzen 5 CPU. This time round, the AMD Ryzen 9 3950X is back inside of the PC. Amazon did replace my CPU because it was absolutely broken last time and my PC would just crash and blue screen. So we have a new one in there and holy Jesus, it is a beast. But yesterday I did actually experience um, a couple of weird things where the PC just turned off while I was trying to play Black Ops Cold War. So that was kind of weird. That was the first time I had problems like that again, but that was definitely a bit worrying because last time round, it started doing the same thing. Maybe with a better cooling setup, it'll be fine. I don't know, we'll find out. One eternity later. And we're done. Check it out. Three white fans on the front, like I said, and then we have two more with, you know, the push-pull configuration, helping the air get inside of the case because after all, you know, the cooling for this PC case could be better I could definitely say that, but to be honest, it kind of surprises me how the temperatures are relatively okay, despite the, you know, rather lack of airflow, uh, you know, being able to get inside of the PC case. But nevertheless, let's pop this thing back on the front. This side panel can be installed rather easily. Boom. There you go. You just kind of like slap it on and we can power the whole thing on. You ready? Boom. The front of the PC case will light up green, but I found a way <laughs> to turn this logo off extremely easily. If you wanna find out how everything works, check out my unboxing video. But what I did is I just pulled the front panel out a little bit, but only on this corner where the contraption is right there to power the front logo right there. But because it's not RGB, which breaks my heart, um, yeah, I kinda just turn it off now. But nevertheless, Lee and Lee Uni fans, boom, they've all synced up now as well, dude. Dude, look at this man. And of course the side panel, it can shut. Whoops, it can actually close and you can close it 100%, but you can also press it and then it opens up. And if you want, you can kind of like open the whole thing up, dude. Amazing. Wow, we've booted up into Windows as well. I've got some shine through keycaps on the Black Widow version three as well. I don't know if I mentioned that already in this video, but I popped these on this morning and wow, they look absolutely incredible, don't they? But yeah, of course, we still have the Razer logo keycap in the corner there as well, but the rest are shine through and it just looks sick. I've got a custom like white and orange color scheme. That's kind of what I'm going for. If you couldn't tell already by the flashing lights at the bottom, because this PC case does have underglow lighting. I don't know why the graphics card has given up on me today and it's no longer lighting up. But besides that, <laughs> at least everything else works. Let's take a look at the temps because I'm sure maybe you want to find out about those. So this is the actual uh, Lee and Lee L-Connect fan software, in case you were wondering. So we have fan mode. This is how you control the fans. We can set it to high speed. Maybe my microphone that's like clipped onto my shirt might pick that up, but they get loud. So this PC is gonna sound like an airplane taking off, uh, but I'm gonna turn it down because I actually don't want them to be loud. But generally I set them on PWM and I just kind of leave it. For the LED lighting effects, we could just set everything to rainbow, just so I could, I guess, <laughs> show you how that looks like. 
select all, apply to all. There's speed, brightness, and direction control for all of your fans right here. So I guess you could daisy chain up to four per one cable. I think that's maybe what they're trying to tell you here. Incredible. So I've set all of them to RGB, and then I've got to open up Dragon Center to do the rest. Everything is now set to rainbow mode. The keyboard, the monitor stand, the mice, freaking everything, man. This is crazy. Even the PC case has underglow on both sides, actually, which is pretty damn sick. Of course, I turned off the front logo there because it's not RGB, but damn. And before I finish up today's video, let's, of course, check out the temperatures, the clock speeds, and, you know, what's going on. And, of course, Cinebench. Cinebench R20. I'm going to do one run for you guys. Hopefully, we can beat my 10K score. But that's what I got last time with the CPU running at, uh, like I said earlier, 4.6 gigahertz on eight of the cores. And then we have 4.3 for the other eight. And this is how it looks like on Ryzen Master. One of the CCDs on the CPU, all of these are set to 4.6. And then on the other CCD and the other two CCXs, everything here is set to 4.3. You can do all of this when you go onto the manual bit right here, select manual, overclocking, and you can mess around with clock speeds, voltages, and even your like memory timings and everything can be adjusted here. It's a pretty decent bit of software, but I've probably talked enough. Let's hit go and find out what happens. Will the PC die? But I hope not. Oh, well, that was a fail. Um, I swear this worked before. <laughs> All right, apparently uh, that is no longer a stable overclock. I don't know what happened but I've just set it to precision boost overdrive. You better not crash now, all right? Because this is not even a manual overclock. Temperatures are sitting at 85 degrees Celsius. Okay, but bear in mind, this is on the voltage running on auto. Maybe I should set it to manual, but I don't know. When it's on precision boost overdrive, I kind of just maybe want to let it do its thing. But hey, we're sticking to 85 degrees Celsius. It's not climbing up too quickly, but we're getting through Cinebench, which is good. I wanna see what score is gonna pull off. All the cores are sitting at about like 4.1, but all right, this time we pulled off 9,358, but the best score I had was 10,169. Um, that is crazy. I've never hit above 10K, but with this CPU it was possible for a brief moment, but now it wouldn't wanna do my manual overclock. I don't know why, maybe it is a bit too aggressive. Hold on, I wanna dial this overclock down. So we're hitting 4.5 on one of the CCDs, and then 4.3 on the other CCDs. Look at this, it's going. The temperatures are a little bit higher, 89. That is actually quite warm, but we're about to finish. Let's see what we get. What, 10K, dude, we hit 10K again. Damn, son. Good stuff. 89 degrees is rather warm, I ain't gonna lie. So I've taken off the front of the case. I wanna see if, you know, right off the bat, maybe we can drop the temperatures a little bit just by having the radiator being able to actually breathe and take in air instead of, you know, being covered up entirely. Like the whole front of the case has no airflow. It's only through the sides and a tiny slot through the bottom. So maybe we can achieve better temperatures like this. Let's see, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna run it again. I've not changed any settings. Hit go. All right, let's see what temperature we climb up to this time. Maybe this will make no difference, you know but maybe, maybe it will, 86 degrees? We climbed up to like 89, 87, 88, 87, 88. Technically, that is ever so slightly cooler. We dropped like two degrees, one or two degrees. And we just hit a score of 10,088, but that is only like one or two degrees less. Still a difference, I suppose. But then again, this room is getting rather warm because whenever I have these lights on and like all the other lights in the room, um, it does get incredibly warm and I really have to open up the window there to let some cool air in. It blows my mind that it can overclock this much. I've not tried to push any of these past 4.3, but whilst we're here, um, I might do a YOLO. Let's give this a shot. Oh man, I'm worried about the temps, dude. Here goes nothing. 4.5 on one, 4.4 on the other. Will it crash? What? It's going. It's going, mate. We're pulling 193 watts. The temperatures are at like 87 degrees. They really didn't change, but hey, look at this. On hardware monitor, 4.5 and 4.4. If you look on Ryzen Master, it is actually hitting those clock speeds on all of the cores with the temperatures being the same. Could we pull off a 4.5 all core overclock? What is the score gonna be? 
10,220, that's an all-time high for me. Okay, let's try 4.5 across the board. Now I'm really pushing it. I feel like this is really pushing it now. 4.5 across the board, hardware monitor. It says all of them apparently maybe hit it, I don't know. Uh-oh, Jesus, if this works, I'm gonna be mind blown. 4.5, all core, 3950X. And okay, I really wasn't expecting that to work and let's dial it back down. That was a crash. I don't wanna increase the voltage because temperatures are high and I don't, I don't wanna kill the CPU. 4.4 on one, 4.5 on the other. I would be very happy with this. If this just like stay stable, that is gonna be what I'm gonna be running it at. All right, thank you all so much for watching. As always, like I said, there'll be links in the video description to like all the things in the setup, all the individual products. I'm gonna try leave links for them in the video description down below to like Amazon in case you wanna go check pricing or maybe even buy any of the things that you see right here, but dude, this PC build is just so sick. However, it is time for me to kind of move on, I think. Like, I don't know. I really do like this case now. It's, it's pretty sick. Don't get me wrong. But I do have the Lian Li PC011 Dynamic XL, the ROG edition PC case. So maybe I should do a PC build in that because I bought that case, I wanted to do a build in it, but then I ended up doing a build in like the Antec DF600 case, then I did one in this. Kinda wanna do the Li and Li PC-011 Dynamic again. That was such a cool case. And that XL version is gigantic. It can fit so many fans. I'll most likely be using the Li and Li Uni fans paired with Deepcool's X-shaped fans, the MF120 GT. I remember the freaking model name even, dude, but I reckon that's gonna be the next PC build. The PC just sitting right there, it takes up like enough of the space, but not too much space on this side of the desk. I can still actually rest my arm and my elbow over here now whilst I'm using my mouse, which is rather nice. So when I'm sitting at my desk, I don't have to solely rely on my armrests. I can now rely kind of like on all of this surface area here, which is perfect because for my mouse, I wanna be able to, you know, have consistent aim. And now that I have this kind of setup, it genuinely works quite well for me. And it's just quite comfortable overall. The monitors, if you may have noticed, I've shifted them all from that side of the table all the way to here so that I could have my elbow resting here, if you get what I mean. But I'm gonna probably wrap today's video up here because I'm gonna just keep rambling. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.